I suppose what I can do before getting started, and I'll consider this like a new cut point uh, so I can record this, edit it, throw it up on YouTube. Um, in this week's stream, I wanted to go over this uh, really short but important idea in Android development, and I think a lot of software development, which is the importance of wrapping third-party libraries. And if you're not familiar with that word, with what that phrase means, it means to, if you have some third-party library um, that you're using in your code base, whether it's Crashlytics for like error handling or like Firebase Analytics um, or Segment for analytics, any tool like that, what you don't usually want to do is have some hard-coded dependency to that or sort of like hard-coded relationship with that dependency in your code base. Instead, you should write what we call a wrapper around it and you get a lot of benefits from that. You get the ability to swap it out easily in the future. You get the ability to write better unit tests. Um, and it's just good to have that decoupling, mostly for those two reasons, but there might be a few other ones that we discover along the way. So the way I wanted to demonstrate this uh, is to actually use two of the libraries that I just mentioned, which were like uh, Firebase Analytics and like Segment for Analytics. And what we're going to do across the whole stream is we're going to look at what happens when you implement one of these with a strict hard-coded dependency on it, um, some of the struggles that that gives us for unit testing, and then some of the struggles that would give us if we wanted to replace it with a new tool. And then what we can go through after that is how to solve those problems, how to write a wrapper. Um, and hopefully you can then take this and extend it to really any library that you use. Um, specifically, this is helpful, or rather, this is easier to do for libraries that um, aren't UI-based, uh, things that do more domain logic, um, things like uh, analytics and error reporting, networking. When it comes to UI-based libraries, let's say you're using like Epoxy from Airbnb, it's harder not to have a direct connection. It's possible, but it's a little harder, and it's not something that I plan to show off today. Um, but man, nothing wants to run yet. Um, we're just having one of those days. So I think while I wait for Gradle to run, also, how am I doing? Bro, I'm not dropping frames, apparently, which is impressive. Um, while I'm waiting for Android Studio to run, what can I show you? Well, one more housekeeping thing, I guess, is um, you can find the code for this here. Um, we're revisiting the study guide app that I started building on stream almost a year ago now. Um, and what I wanted to do was take some features in that app and try to build like analytics tracking for them. Start off by using Firebase Analytics um, and then show you why that doesn't work. Um, classic. So while I did my stream setup beforehand, uh, is I added the Firebase and segment dependencies to the project. Um, I did that on my other computer and everything was fine. It's not working on this computer because I need a Google services.json file, which I can get from the Firebase dashboard. So sorry for not doing that. Let me head over to the Firebase console and get that for this project, and then we should be good to get started. Um, let's download this. And so I downloaded it, so what I can do then, I lost my cursor. We can go over to our terminal here. We can do um, move the file from downloads to our app folder. Okay, and now we should be able to run with Firebase. Hi, Matt. Thanks for coming by. You made it just in time because I had 15 minutes of technical difficulties, but now we're getting started. Um, another thing for the handful of you who are here, um, I need to, I want to set up like a reoccurring nightbot message for this and also maybe put something in the description below in the channel. But I added a really great new nightbot command, which is exclamation point recap. And what that should do it didn't work. Um, 
But what I intended for that to be was a way to let me know that someone was coming in and they wanted a recap of what they were working on. And that would be a way to remind me to stop and give a highlight of what's happening in the stream so far and what we're actively working on. I think that will be helpful, especially for this sort of live coding stream where it's hard to just jump in and understand. So I wanted a way for people to pop in and say, hey, I just got here. What are we working on? Um, that command should have worked. I wonder if it didn't. <laughs> it worked early. It did work earlier when I tested it. Um, I wonder if it's because I'm the broadcaster. Can someone else try it out? Um, oh, oh, I said, hmm, it should work. Um, I was a little worried because maybe I have the cooldown way too high, and I think that's what I did. Um, so let's try to change that cooldown. Um, let's make it like 120 seconds. I had it at, when it's 300 seconds, should be like five minutes, but I don't think anyone has used it yet. Um, at least not in the last five minutes, but um, I want to make sure I typed it right. Yeah, exclamation point recap. Can someone give it one more try? We'll see if we get lucky. Um, but anyways, uh, if it doesn't work, I'll at least keep an eye out for that command. Um, all right, yep, nope, we're just not lucky. Another, another great error. But at least we're running the app now, so I can start to get through what I wanted to get through. All right, so if you're new here, or rather if you haven't been here and like, or if you're new as of like, I don't know, several months ago, um, you haven't seen this study guide app, which is what we used to build live stream every week. And maybe we'll come back to this. When I started live streaming, my goal was to take like an individual app and build it from start to finish, like all the way to production live streamed. Everything I've done in this app has been live streamed, but it's kind of been scattered over the last year and we've taken break to do some of the composed streams and stuff like that. Before this um, stream where we talk about the importance of putting a wrapper around libraries, um, I brought it back up because I thought a good way to show that is to use like an analytics library and maybe say we want to record an analytics event every time an article is bookmarked or unbookmarked. Hey Bo, I'm doing good, how are you? So with that in mind, um, the only thing I did before the stream, and actually I can even pull up the code base to show you all this. Um, hold on, please hold while I deal with this. Why did I get a triple monitor set up? It was all fun and games until I can't move anything anymore. Um, let me show you what I did before stream. So all I did was add the dependencies for um, Firebase and for Segment. These are two analytics libraries out there. Um, we are going to first try building something with the Firebase analytics, talk about our um, struggles with it, and then how to do things the right way. So I always fumble over this stuff. I think where I shine is when I just wing it and say, all right, let's dive into it. So let's do that. I want to close all of these and we want to go into, we have this base article list view model class. And what this class does is it's um, basically is what's responsible for fetching data. So when it's initialized, it fetches some articles from the repository and it handles if it needs to retry on an error and it has this method for bookmark clicked. So over on our app, every time you click on this little bookmark icon, that method gets fired. And what happens behind the scenes is that it makes a call to our database, persists that this article is bookmarked, gets the response, updates the UI. You don't have to worry about all that. It's not needed for what I'm about to talk about, but just providing some context into what we're looking at. So 
let's talk about what we might do um, if we wanted to record an analytics event for this. Well, one thing we can do is we can, well, first, we want to get a reference to our fire, to Firebase. Um, and then we can go Firebase.analytics, and then we want to track, whoops, um, we want to call log event. And we're going to use this method signature right here, which takes in the event name, and then some parameters, which are a bundle. So let's do that. Let's give it a name. It can be um, article bookmarked. Um, and then can we do we can give it a bundle of the parameters that we want to track. So for this event, something I might do is like um, we could give it a key, which is like article title to article dot title. Um, we'll get the input from the HTML title there. And then we might want to say is bookmarked, and that will map to the updated article dot bookmarked property. So we're going to log an event in Firebase. It says this article was bookmarked, and then we've got some properties to say whether or not it was bookmarked. So that's what we're going to build out of the box. Let's test it, run it, make sure it works, and then we'll look at why this is very wrong, what I just did. Um, conceptually wrong. It should work. That's what I'm going to hope for. Uh -huh. But we will find out. I'm going to move this over here as well. I'm going to go into analytics real time. This will be nice. Um, let's try this out. So we've got real time analytics. Hey, cool. It even knows where I'm at. Let's go to um, can I view events? from here. Well, let's bookmark a few articles. Uh, they're not bookmarking. Why? It should have worked. Is it wrong or just, yeah, it's not scalable. Um, although my bookmarking feature seems to have borked now that I did that. And I'm not sure why. That doesn't make any sense. Um, is it throwing an error when I bookmark? I don't think so. Hmm. Um, let's make sure I actually ran this and got an updated version. Okay, it clearly worked, but the UI is just not updating right, which is interesting. Um, hmm. All right, let's see if I can find proof that the events were firing. Um, I thought it would show up in the real time stuff. But I don't think real time gives me the information that I want. All right, we're going to. Got to hydrate for Megan. Thank you. Okay, we're going to briefly ignore the fact that I can't get the Firebase dashboard to work and go back to the scalability that was the part that I wanted to reference here. Um, so let's, let's look at this piece of code here, and let's think about um, a couple problems. Um, the first one that I think conceptually is quick to demonstrate, um, yeah, it's possible I just need to wait on them. There's some ADB command for debug. Yeah, maybe I'll look into that and turn that on. Um, but it's not something that needs to hold me up from explaining what we should change about this code. So one of the first things to think about is um, just conceptually, like having a direct reference to Firebase here was easy and added 
uh, like six lines of code to make this work. Um, but let's say I have this all over the code base, everywhere I track an event, right? And then one day the product team or whoever makes decisions at the company comes over and says, well, now we want to use segment as our analytics vendor. And suddenly you have hundreds of use cases all around the code base that you need to change to stop referencing Firebase and change them to reference a different tool instead. I think that's conceptually easy to visualize. That's going to be a problem. Um, yes, exactly. It, it's happened to everybody. Um, and in addition to that, this actually gives us an interesting problem when it comes to unit testing. And I'll show you what that is. We already have, nope, not here. Um, we have a base article list view model test. And we can go through this, but all it does is it tests um, loading articles. It tests that when you click a bookmark, it should persist an article. Um, it already has really good test coverage. Let's look at this test specifically. I'm going to run this, and I want to see what happens when our unit test tries to call that Firebase code that we just added. And this might take a minute. We can wait for it. While it's running, um, if you haven't done this before, you can try to guess what's going to happen if you think this will pass or fail. Um, I was probably foreshadowing like crazy. It would fail. And let's talk about why it failed. So it failed here when it tried to, to like get the analytics. We can click through. Does it give us an error? It gives us one right here method get main looper in android.os.looper not mocked. So what this means is that Firebase is trying to, oversimplifying it, but Firebase is trying to get a reference to like the Android system so that it can do what it needs to do to um, get information. But because our unit test is not running on an Android system, it doesn't work. Now, there's some ways around this from a testing perspective. One is the idea that instead of calling Firebase directly, we could use a simplified version of like dependency injection um, to specify that we want to send in Firebase analytics. So what we could do here is we could instead do like private val Firebase analytics that will extend Firebase Analytics, I think is the class. Yep. And we can even give like a default value that will be used in most cases. Um, and this allows us to, in our unit tests, provide a mocked value. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that. I'm going to go down that rabbit hole for just a minute or two. Um, but this, I'm prefacing this, do not recommend this approach. But I want to walk through like um, why it's a start. So then we can go down here and we can do Firebase Analytics, that log event. Um, we can then go into, we have this test robot class that builds our view model. And we could, well, let's talk about this. So uh, do I have, yeah, so I don't even have a mocking library in here. So this is the first thing, right, is let's say I want to follow a similar idea as other people will use in unit tests, and I want to provide like a, a fake implementation of Firebase, not a real one, because I don't want our unit test to need Firebase. Also, I don't want our unit test to actually send data to Firebase, right? Our unit tests should be running all the time, and they're testing like dummy inputs, and I don't want that to be used in my production data. So I want to be able to provide like a fake implementation of Firebase. But the problem is that like the Firebase Analytics class, the one that we want, um, it's a final class. I can't inherit from it. And so there are tools around this. You could use like Mach-K or Makito, but at the end of the day, you're just hiding the same problem is that even though we're kind of using a little better dependency injection by putting it inside the base article list view model um, constructor, 
we still have this strict dependency on Firebase, and that's what we want to avoid. So it's kind of a long-winded way of describing the problem, but I hope that it explained it. Um, but now that we understand the problem, that we don't want to take some third-party library and have this um, rigid dependency on it in our code base, let's talk about how we can work around it. And one way is to, with testing in mind, with the ability to provide a fake implementation in mind, a solution would be to come up with a construct that we have ownership over. So let's do that by creating like an interface, an interface that exists in our code base that defines the contract for any analytics that we want to run in our project. So let's make a new, let's go, where do we want to go? Um, let's make a new directory here called analytics. Consider slapping a string res on that abstract val. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know if I need, um, how do I do it? In, I think in Kotlin there's like, I have to do like add field. Is that it? Thought I had to do something like that. Hmm. Git, thank you, I knew it was close. Okay. Um, so we'll go into our analytics folder and let's create an interface called analytics tracker. Um, make this an interface. So we can create an analytics tracker and we can have something that defines um, our contract for analytics tracking, right? So all we're gonna wanna do really is we could have a fun function and we can call it track event and it needs an event name, which is a string. And then it's going to have some properties, which we know are just gonna be a map of the property name and its value, which could be any type. And we can default this to be an empty map. We can say that by default, an event doesn't have properties, but we um, want to be able to supply some. Uh, what does the at get do? Is that injection or just a Kotlin getter? Um, good question. Uh, let's go back to that side note. Where did I do that? Um, so originally I just had this code. I had this abstract val, which is an empty state message text res, specifically saying this refers to a string resource in the code base. Now, without it, um, Android Studio would allow me to just assign this any value. I could say equals one, two, three. Um, but if I annotate it with the string res annotation, then this allows Android Studio to enforce that it's assigned an actual string resource. Um, but it also, I don't know if you can read this message, it says this annotation is not applicable to target member property without backing field or delegate. Um, so the at git is basically a way to like tell the annotation to target the getter method. Um, so if you try to map this in your head to Java code and you would have a function called get empty state message text res, that annotation would be applied to that getter function. And I think at compile time, that's what this does under the hood. Um, thank you, Panda. I'm glad they're getting better. I played around with the stream settings. Uh, so hopefully when this is uploaded to YouTube, it should look nicer too. So back over to our analytics tracker. And this is actually all that we need to do um, code-wise. So let's recap this and um, yeah, no problem, Brown Lamb, I'm glad that helped. So let's recap this and add some documentation. So we want to create our own implementation or our own contract for analytics events for, sorry, tracking analytics events in the code base so that we aren't tightly coupled to any specific third party vendor. And then I, I wouldn't always do this in like my own code base, but just to clarify for y'all and anyone who reads this, we can add something like, um, by having our view models depend on this interface rather than directly on Firebase segment, etc. 
we allow our, we give ourselves the capability to swap between those tools and also easily create fake implementations in unit tests. So those are the big reasons for doing these. And just to, since we're here and I'm inspired, let's document this. Um, this method should be called for any event in the application that we want to track. Um, param event name be a unique identifier for the event being tracked. And then um, properties, this will be a map of properties um, related to the event um, that provide more detailed information such as which item was clicked or, or how a switch was toggled. Some ideas of what could happen there. Um, nice. I love writing documentation. It always feels like a chore, and then when I just do it, it feels so good. So we've defined our own analytics tracker, right? Let's, um, let's now show how we could use this. We'll go back into our base article list view model. Now, we talked about this. We don't want to use this. We don't want to use Firebase Analytics, but we do want to track things. So we can have this consume an analytics tracker instead, and it will reference our interface for an analytics tracker. Question here. I know I am late, but I love the new setup and hope you will take care of those plants behind you looking so good. Yeah, the plants are really nice. They're all Megan's. Um, we have a beautiful big monstera over there. Um, that one in the little pink plant, it's hard to see. We just got that for our third anniversary that we celebrated last week. It's a pink nerve plant. It looks gorgeous. Um, next to it is a, um, a actual, like, a levitating plant holder that I got from the GDE program, but I don't have a plant in it yet. But when I add one, uh, you'll be able to see that floating in the background. All right. We've added our analytics tracker. Now we need to update our call site. So change this to analytics tracker. We want this to be track event. That's what we called it. We had this event name. Uh, let me just clean up some typing here. And um, instead of a bundle, we use a map. Map of properties. OK. So now this is what our code will look like here. Um, we give the event name and we give the properties at the call site. So this is great. We have the ability to track um, when something was bookmarked, um, which article was bookmarked, whether it was or was not bookmarked, and then send that off to our analytics tracker. So this will actually make um, testing a lot easier now. So we can go back into our base article list view model robot and we can have like a fake analytics tracker. Um, and so, hmm. Actually, I'm thinking in my head about a way that I would rewrite this. Um, Got to hydrate. Cheers. Let's come back to that. Let's keep going with this for a second. We're going to create a fake analytics tracker. It doesn't exist yet. We're going to go make it. Um, we have, looks like we have a fakes directory already. So in our fakes directory, I can create a fake analytics tracker. This can extend the analytics tracker, have it override. Where's, I don't remember the shortcuts. Um, override track event and not do anything yet. So the reason I'm thinking about backtracking on what I told all of you earlier is that um, for a unit test, what I might want to do is keep like a list of all of the events that were tracked 
and then I could run some assertion to say, like, assert that this event was tracked. Um, now, if I want to keep that list, one thing that's annoying is I have two properties here. And so I would need a list of, like, these two things together. Basically, what I want to change this to is I want to make a single class um, called, like, analytics event. And then I can maintain a list of those. Question from Tim. Is this a typical setup that you use for testing? Um, I don't recall details from your talk, Espresso Patronum, but it was about the robot stuff, right? Yes. Uh, robots are a typical thing that I use for testing. Um, I'll give you the short version on what a test robot is real quick. Um, if we look at this robot, and now let's import this real quick. And sorry, let me just fix the compiler. OK, so let's collapse all of these. Um, why No. I want, oh man, what are my shortcuts? I thought there was a way to collapse these, and I think my shortcuts are all screwy. Um, so what the robot does, if you look at these method signatures, is it basically serves as a proxy between my unit test and the view model. So it's responsible for creating the view model and any dependencies that it has. And then it calls these functions um, to perform some action. And what we get with this layer of abstraction is if we go into the base article list view model test, um, our unit test becomes super readable because rather than typing all of it out in the unit test, we're just chaining these calls together on our robot in a readable way to explain what happens. So I want to build the view model, emit some articles from the API, assert this view state, click bookmark for an article, and then I want to assert that that article was persistent. It just becomes very readable. It's a really nice pattern. Um, if you remind me later, I can try to send you the video. But I'm going to try to keep plowing through because I did say that I would hard stop at 8 o'clock, which is in 30 minutes. But I think I can get through what I want to get through. Um, maybe, maybe I keep going through the wrapping part, and then I come back to unit testing. Because I don't think unit testing is required for what I want to show you, but I was able to show how the previous hard-coded solution hindered writing unit tests. Now that we know that we can write them, that's great. Uh, I'll try to come back and show you what that looks like. But let's keep going on the whole like third-party lib thing and why that's a benefit, right? So now that we have an interface defining this contract, but we know at this point we still want our app to use um, words. We want it to use Firebase Analytics, we can create a custom implementation for that. Call it Firebase Analytics Tracker. Have this implement our Analytics Tracker interface. And we can write some documentation here to explain. So this is a concrete implementation of Analytics Tracker that will send any events tracked by the app to Firebase Analytics. Um, I don't know if that's, that's not going to resolve yet, but it will. Um, so inside track event, now that we have this hard-coded solution, this is where we can um, put that uh, concrete reference to Firebase that we want. So we could do Firebase.analytics log event, give it the event name, and then how do we do this? Is there a to bundle? No. Um, can I do bundle of properties? All right, let's go to Google real quick. There's got to be a quick way to do a map into a bundle. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if there's a shortcut to this. Um, all right, well, there is the old-fashioned for loop, according to Stack Overflow. Um, 
Looks like that might be it. Um... Can we do this? No. Why not? Why doesn't that work? Oh, because it's a list of pair. Um, all right, let's do that. So let's just do a for loop. We can create a bundle, and then we can do properties that for each. Um, whoops. Typing is hard. Oh my god. Oh, do I know? Yeah, that would be, Azul would have the fancy function for this, but. Um, let me double check over here. Because Stack Overflow was sold today for 1.8 billion? That's crazy. Hey, look at this. This is exactly what um, Absol said to do. And it's right down here. Let's just copy it. It'll work. Um, oh, that's where you pasted from? That's funny. Uh, Okay, it'll work. It will satisfy me for now. Um, another small benefit of these little wrapper classes is that we can give it the contract we like. So I like the syntax track event. I like my properties being a map because then it's not like tightly coupled either to the Android system either. Firebase, Firebase could take in a map object, but they chose to make it a bundle. Don't ask me why. Um, they also call it log event, and like that's semantics, but the nice thing about a wrapper is you can like give it the contract you want, right? So the next part we need to do to make this work, the part that I don't like, is we need to do some dagger code, because um, in order for... Oh, do I need to update each of my things? Um, Maybe I don't? Yeah, so there's, we have this, um, uh, dagger module here, which tells dagger how to provide, um, something. There's a whole stream on this and I used dagger because that was what was suggested at the time and I didn't like it, but Basically, what we need to do is we can create this function called provide analytics tracker. And it will return an analytics tracker. And then what we can do inside of here is we can just say return Firebase analytics tracker. And we need to annotate this with that provides. And the way, so this, the short way of thinking about it, this is how Dagger knows how to create an analytics tracker. We'll come back to this code later. This code is really powerful. But what we need to do next is go into like um, our Android Assets article list view model and we need to add the property here as well. Whoops, have this be analytics tracker. And then have this be passed up to the base class. And actually, I guess it doesn't need to be val because it just gets passed up to the base class. So we did this for one view model. We have another view model in the code base that uses this. I'm sorry, this is um, not totally related. What is it called? I just called it bookmark list view model not totally related to the concept, but required to make everything pass. And once I get Firebase in, I can show you like what's really powerful about all the code that we're just doing. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate it. I am getting to the golden aha moment very shortly. 
Right. Tim described it. So Dagger knows how to map like a specific interface to its actual implementation, and so the code doesn't have to care about what it is. Um, so we've got this. We can click some items. It still doesn't want to update right away, and I don't understand why. I don't understand why um, sending something to Firebase is screwing that up. But what we can do to test that things are working, we can go into track event here. I'm going to set a breakpoint. We're going to start there. And I'm just going to tap on this. And look, my breakpoint is hit. The event name is article underscore bookmarked. And the properties, um, when it loads, should be what we expect. Nice. Article title, unit testing custom web checks. Kenny Gunderman, thank you for the follow. And is bookmarked is true. So even though I'm having a little trouble with the dashboard and um, getting the UI to update, we can at least see that this is in fact running. <laughs> yes, Android dev. Okay, so that is that was a lot, but we learned why you should not depend directly on Firebase, how to write an interface that is your wrapper around that library that you want to use, that third-party library. And then we updated all of our code to use the interface, which is our contract, instead. Let me know in chat if you have any questions about what we've done so far. Um, and if you still don't quite see why we did it, now I'm going to show you in just a few more lines what's really powerful. Let me commit this code before I do that. Um, adding Firebase implementation. And I'm going to show you in literally two files uh, what is going to blow your mind about this approach. So I'm going to go into this analytics folder. And the next one I'm going to do is make a segment analytics tracker. OK. So let's say we have this code. We have this Firebase Analytics tracker. Everything's working. Everything's great. Product comes to us one day and says, hey, we want to change vendors. So you're like, all right, we're going to change to use this new vendor called Segment. So I'm going to make a Segment Analytics tracker. And I'm going to have this Implement Analytics tracker. It's going to have the track event function. And inside here, we can do, um, hmm, how do I do this? I need um, I don't think that I can, so I can't just call analytics from here because it requires a context. So what I'm going to do is have um, segment be passed into this constructor here. Uh, so we'll have our segment instance be passed into the constructor here. And what we can do inside track event is called segment instance dot track track. And here um, is Android trash? No, it is not. Um, we can track with the event name. And then we need to create segment properties. How do we do that? I do this in another project. Um, let me pull up that code and remember how segment works. I should have been prepared for that. Um, got it. So we can create some segment properties, which will use their properties class. And then here we can actually do a for loop. We can do properties that for each key value. So you can do segment properties dot put value why nope I want the Kotlin version why are you yelling at me there's oh I didn't mean to use that slidey link that's not oh wait yes this is what I want replace with Kotlin's for each and we can update this as well and so now we can pass in segment properties. 
Okay, so we've created a new concrete implementation of our interface for a segment analytics tracker. So here's what's gonna like what makes this really cool. So we talked in the very beginning how if you had your view models directly depend on Firebase and you had that all over your code base for hundreds of events, right? And they came to you and said, we want to use a new vendor. You'd have so much work just to replace all those little instances. But because we've created an interface and because we're using a tool like Dagger that allow, like that does all your dependency injection for you, we need to change one method. All we need to do is go into our data module and we just need to replace this line right here. And then anywhere in the app that's referencing this interface and consuming this interface will just work and it will start sending everything to segment. So the level of effort to change from one third party library to another once you've done this setup is two files. Um, Hilt is built on top of Dagger, so I think they're about the same. But Hilt is like, um, it makes some of the Android stuff easier for you. Now, what I'm going to struggle with here is um, I don't know if Hilt gives me a way to, let me see if I had one here. I don't know if, does anyone know if Hilt gives you a way to, ah, this is what I want to consume the application context. So what I can do in data module is I can have application context be passed into this. I could say segment instance is segment, or whoops, analytics dot with app context. Um, and then I can return segment analytics tracker with segment instance. So let's run this. And while it's running, Larry, thank you for the follow. While it is running, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to segment Android. Um, Compose is great. I love it. Uh, I have, if you do exclamation point YouTube, you can go to my YouTube channel and I have a bunch of streams where we did Jetpack Compose that are up on YouTube for you to watch if you're interested. Um, I'm going to log in to segment real quick. Um, I'm just going to click bookmark. I'm still having the issue where the UI doesn't update. It's entirely possible that this is something I caused off screen because I did a bunch of version updates today, including like updating Compose and maybe I broke something about the bookmarking feature. It's working under the hood. It's just not updating the UI. Um, but look at this. We can go into our segment debugger now and we can actually see all of these article bookmarked functions that are triggered. It's right on time, about 15 minutes under when I hope to be done. Um, I actually showed y'all uh, the problem. We went from, do a brief recap, we went from implementing Firebase right inside the view model and talking about why that was bad because it didn't allow for good unit testing and it created this strict dependency on Firebase, which wouldn't scale as we started to use it all over the place. So we talked about creating an interface that would be our own custom contract of what we expect out of an analytics tracker. We updated all of our implementations to use that interface, use our own contract that our code base defines, created the concrete implementation that would then send things to Firebase or Segment, and then we went into our Dagger module or in your projects, whatever framework you use for dependency injection, and we updated the method to provide an analytics tracker so that we can easily switch between Segment and Firebase. I hope this was interesting. Um, I hope that from this, you can start to see other ways that it could scale. You could use a similar approach around um, databases. Actually, we do that here. If you look at this method here, provide Android assets articles, and it returns an article repository. Under the hood, what this uses, this uses retrofit, but it exposes an article repository interface, which means that our view model doesn't know that we use retrofit. 
And if we ever changed it to use GraphQL or some other networking library, the view model would just work. Similarly with bookmarked articles, this gives you like an article repository that is your bookmarks. And from here, you have no idea that it's using room databases under the hood. So if I ever want to change my app to use um, like SQL Delight, I would have the same solution. I would basically just create a new database implementation, swap it around here, and everything would just work. Um, yeah, thank you, Brown Lamb. Uh, if you hope you all enjoyed this, if you're not following the stream, follow the stream. Uh, we do this every Wednesday night. Um, if you have ideas for topics, let me know in chat. Easiest way to reach me with stuff, though, is on like Twitter. Uh, you can always at me. You can send me DMs. Those are open. Um, make sure you're subbed to the YouTube. We just started. So Monday was the first time I made a video specific for the YouTube channel. Um, it's where I host all the stream recordings, but I made, I want to get into making YouTube specific content soon. So look, it worked. Um, but I just gave you the recap right before this, so I'm not going to do it again, but I'm glad that works. I will add some messages so we can make the recap command a little more discoverable, but I have 13 minutes before I told my partner I would hop off um, streaming. Anyone want to see if I can speed run unit tests in 13 minutes? <laughs> Cheers, that's all. The one for Tim. Oh, what did, let me scroll up. Tim asked about something. Um... Oh, robot pattern. Um, yeah, let me check on the YouTube channel to see if I uploaded that stream. Um, <laughs> unit test? Yeah. Oh my god, I did not upload the stream for robot patterns. So, um, let's do... Let's do this, and I'm cutting out of my, uh, um, okay, uh, Trax, I'll follow up with both of you. I don't have it right now, but I'll follow up with information on the robot patterns. Let's switch to segment. Okay, and let's speed run how we could uh, write some analytics tracking. I've thought about developer advocacy, actually. Um, Kenny, but one of the main reasons is I just, I don't want to get out of like product development. I love streaming and content creation, but I also love my full-time job where I work on uh, building an Android app for Capsule Pharmacy. And I'm just, I'm not ready to give up like that part of it yet. Um, but dev advocacy has been considered. All right, 12 minutes. I'm going to go fast, but I will watch chat. And if I confuse the heck out of anybody, just yell and stop. Okay. All right. First thing we're going to do. I talked about how this was kind of upsetting to deal with in unit tests, to have to worry about these two properties. So I'm going to make a new interface right here, and I'm going to call it an analytics event. And this is actually really nice. Let me show you why. I'm going to create an interface called analytics event. And the interface is going to have an event name, which is a string. And whoops, no comma there. It's going to have properties, which will be a map of string and any. Okay. Every analytics event has these two things. Now, we can create a custom implementation here. We could call it bookmarked article analytics event. I like verbosity sometimes. This will extend analytics event. Um, this needs two properties, an article name, which is a string, and um, is bookmarked, which will be a Boolean. So let's implement our properties here. So event name, we can just hard code this. This is bookmarked article. Properties, we can return a map of, and then we can use um, the vals that are passed into this constructor right here. So we could say article name, or article title, I think I called it, uh, to article name, and then 
is bookmarked to is bookmarked. So I actually really like this kind of constructor uh, for us. Um, we can even make this a data class, which will help with like equality checks and stuff. Um, because it gets rid of all this boilerplate right here. I specify the event. I specify what properties are important to that event. Um, it also is nice because strings like these, if I called this in more than one place in the code base, I have to worry about um, typos and stuff. But now it's all in one place. And it's going to make this other part really clean, which is inside here. So instead of doing all this stuff here, I lied. First, we're going to go to track event, and we're going to change this to take in the event. Uh, let's, let's cut that documentation from before and throw that over here. I'll clean it up later. Actually, this is just going to go to property now. Okay, so now we can go in here. Now instead of all this, we can do something that's a little cleaner. We could say val event equals um, artic bookmarked article event. And then we can give it updated article.html title dot get input. And then um, is bookmarked is equal to update article dot bookmarked. So let's add names to those call arguments. So now our view model no longer has that complicated like event name string and property mapping. It creates an actual instance of the event. And then we can go as far as just doing analytics tracker dot track event event. Boom. So highly recommend the analytics event, like creating a separate interface for that analytics event because it pulls out a lot of that logic. And if you have an analytics event that maybe doesn't have properties, you don't even need a data class. You could use like a Kotlin object. So like an example could be like, you know, object bookmark screen viewed event. And then have this like extend analytics event, you know, event name viewed bookmarks, but then properties would just be an empty map. So this is another really nice way to do stuff. Uh, can I recommend channels like yours? I don't know a ton of other... Um, reach out to me on Twitter after this. I don't know a ton of others on Twitch. I know a few. Uh, I don't know who's still streaming, but I have seven minutes left to get through this concept. So we're really speed running. We created an analytics event interface. This cleaned up some code. Why else did I really want to do this? Well, that's because of this fake analytics tracker class. I wanted to, we'll change this. I wanted to have a way to track a list of historical, um, all of the events that were tracked by this interface. So we can say tracked events will be um, a mutable list of analytics events. And it'll start off empty. But what we can do is every time track events is called, we can add it to our internal list. And then what we can do here is we could have expose a, fu a public function, say assert event tracked, and give it an expected event. And then what we can do inside of here is we could do something like assert that um, tracked events contains expected event. And I think I have the truth library in here. Yep. So now our fake analytics tracker is really nice. Every time tracked events is called, we throw it in this internal list that we manage, and then we have a way to assert that something was tracked. So we can go back to the bookmarked article robot. Nope. Base article list vbottle robot. That's the one where we created the view model and we have this fake analytics tracker. Let's add another assertion on here. We can say assert event tracked. This also takes an expected event, which will be an analytics event. And we can say um, fake analytics tracker dot assert event tracked expected event. Got it. So the robot is a proxy between our unit test and all of our dependencies. So that's why this method really is just 
proxying the same thing. So now what we can do is go into the base article list view model test class. And right here we have this clicking bookmark should persist article. I'm going to update this to also say um, expected event tracked. Expected event. This is going to be a bookmarked article analytics event. Um, the article title is going to be test title from above. I should abstract this, but I'm going fast. Um, and we're going to say is bookmarked is true for this test case. And then on our robot, we can say assert event tracked expected event. So now we've got a unit test that will verify that when an article is bookmarked, not only is it persisted in the database, but that this event um, fires as well. Now, this is going to yell at me because this is a different signature now. So let's update these real quick. Event.event .event name, event.properties. We're just, I'm just cutting these and using the new uh, method signature. And then instead of calling this directly now, I reference it from the event instead of it being passed in like it was before. But this is what I wanted to show you. We updated this unit test to verify that an event is tracked. We're going to debug this real quick and it should pass and everything will be great and I will be three minutes under schedule. Um, and then I can slow down and recap for those like two, three minutes. Um, I appreciate y'all for hanging out for the speed run. I thought for sure that when I said I was going to speed run unit test that the viewer count was going to go down to zero, but no one did it. Uh, that means so much to me. And our test passed. Um, cool. I know streamers will like speed run video games, and I never really thought that I would like do some speed run coding, but wow, we did, so I had like 12, so under 10 minutes, I like rearranged all my analytics tracking to support unit tests. That was, that was pretty quick. <laughs> Ooh, I gotta add the BTTV emotes, um, cause people leave is a good one. There's also people weird leave. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Quick recap. You saw, the last time I did a recap was why we added the analytics tracker. What we just ran through was changing this to use a new interface called analytics event. This allowed us to extract out the properties specific to an event. Um, and then it made it a little easier for us to create events because we can define like the constructor for what we care about for an event and then have the implementation do all the annoying work of setting up like the, I keep looking up at this monitor when I should look at my webcam, um, setting up the event name and properties. This allowed us to, go, oops, this allowed us to go to our fake analytics tracker and create a system that inside our unit tests would keep track of any events that are logged and give us the ability to assert that something was logged. And then with that, we updated a unit test in our code base to actually use this and assert that when we bookmark an article, something is tracked. Oh, I'm an emote library. Yeah, I'm everything internet related. It's just emotes, memes, obscure video references. They're, they're all in my head. Um, but yeah, I heard a few minutes ago the doorbell rang, so... Um, I'm going to hop off kind of abruptly to go eat dinner. Thank you all for, um, for hanging out tonight. I hope you all learned something. I hope it was helpful. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know in Twitter if you have any ideas for streams or if you're someone who's watching this recap on YouTube in the comments. Um, yeah, I will see you all next Wednesday. Thanks, everyone.